It is currently 11 minutes past nine. Are you fucking serious? 56 minutes. It was 60 a minute ago. Anyway, what the fuck was that? Welcome to my movie review of A History of Violence, directed by David Cronenberg, who directed The Fly. I swear to fucking God, if I hear one more fucking noise. David Cronenberg, who directed The Fly. Okay? The Fly. And, uh, essentially, stars Viggo Mortensen, Ed Harris, uh, Jason Clark has like a small role, you know, I think it's him anyway. Um, and, uh, who else? Oh yeah, the late great William Hort, rest in peace. So basically what the plot of the history of violence is. Got this guy, played by Viggo Mortensen, who's a family man. He seems like a nice guy, gets along with everyone in this community, gets along with everyone around him. He's married to a beautiful woman who is fucking sexy. <laughs> oh! Yeah, anyway, she's, she's good looking, all right? She's good looking. And we see her naked at one point. Oh, I'll get to that later. But, um, yeah, so he's married to her. He has a kid, um, teenage son, and he has a little daughter. And he's a good father, you know. He cares about his kids. He teaches his daughter um, pretty much. like He comforts his daughter when she's afraid of the dark and when she's having issues, like, with monsters and stuff like that. And she, he's, like, really you know, passionate about his son and hoping hoping that his son does well. Um meanwhile, you know, like he's raised his kids well and him and his wife are madly in love. They have sex, they have great nights, they role play as a cheer cheerleader. Oh, that scene. Anyway, I'll get to that. And like life is good for him and he lives in this kind of nice, like quiet area, like isolated kind of area. And he works at a coffee shop and has friends there. So, essentially what ends up happening is, at the beginning of the movie, you got these two guys who are escaped, or, you know, thugs, gangsters, they kill a bunch of people at this motel, um, a little girl screams, and Jason Clark shoots the girl, kills her, and they're basically driving to this place, and you're like, yeah, they don't mean well, so I'm like, okay, cool. So, essentially, um... You know, <clears throat> fucking um, the kid, the teenage kid, uh, the son is being bullied at school because he, he's really good at baseball and the bully confronts him at the locker, which is uh, this scene right here. He confronts him at a locker and stuff like that. And he doesn't stand up for himself and all that shit. He gets, he gets beat up and hit and all that. And he's best friends with this girl and all and they. They spend time doing different things on the weekends. So essentially, these two thugs end up driving into this, near this, uh, the two bullies. And the bullies like that, but the thugs look at them and they're like, oh shit. So anyway, while Viggo Mortensen is in the coffee shop working, the two guys walk in. He's like, look, guys, we're closed. We, I can't really serve you right now. And he's like, I don't give a shit and all this. And he's like, get the hell down, get the fuck down, bitch. And then he pu they pull a gun and try to rob the place and hit it. And then they, they try and stop it. It's like, we don't have any money, you know. But you're, we, <coughs> you know, you're welcome to what we have because we take care of here and all that. I'm like, yeah, we know that. So just as he's about to, like, shoot your woman and all that other stuff, and just as the gun's there, um, Viggo Mortensen grabs coffee, throws it on the guy's face, grabs the gun, hits it, shoots the guy out the door. And kills, shoots the other guy in the head. Really cool. Because of this, he ends up becoming the town hero. Everyone's like, oh my god, it's on the news. And people, you know, start approaching him. His dad, his wife's like, oh my god, you're a hero. In the process, he gets injured and ends up in hospital. But he ends up okay. Um, You know, from the injury. And essentially, um, you know, everyone is calling him a hero. Uh. TV is interviewing him and all these other people are kind of coming to him and stuff like that and he kind of just wants to go home and spend time with his family because his family needs him okay 
gata. And uh, essentially, people, you know, the kid gets more shit at school for it and all this other shit starts happening. So, eventually, while in his house, he sees this car outside. He's like, who the fuck is that? And then he's working at a very busy day at the diner. Everyone is coming, asking for autographs, all this crazy shit. And then it turns out that this guy comes, played by Ed Harris, starts talking to him, saying, do you not remember me? And he's like, sir, no, I don't know you, and all this stuff. And he goes, "You're yeah, Joey, and he keeps calling them Joey, when the guy's name is Tom. Is it Tom? Um, Yeah, Tom. No, not Tom. Uh, it's like Stalls, isn't it? Yeah, Tom Stalls, that's his name, Tom Stalls. And essentially he's like, why are you calling me Joey? He's like, yeah, because you don't listen to me. And basically, he is starting to be like, it turns out that he has a dark past in regards to this guy and he has a burnt on his face. So his wife tells him to leave. Uh, they go off, she calls Sam, who was the cop. The cop comes and pulls him over and says, we got decent people here. Don't let me see you here again. It's like, yeah, don't worry about it, officer. And essentially, um, Viggo Mortensen is kind of like, here's about all this. And stuff starts getting weird because Ed Harris's character starts stalking and doing things. Um, runs into um, Tom again, tells him, you know, calls him Joey. They go to the house and then he gets annoyed at them. Um, there's even a scene where he runs, like a really intense scene where he fucking runs to his family to get the guns and to try and defend them, defend himself against them because he's a feeling that they're, because he sees the car in the neighborhood and he feels like they're going to drive there. And eventually, um, you know, the wife is out shopping with the daughter for shoes and the guy is there stalking her again, Ed Harris, and being a fucking creep. And essentially, they're wondering what the fuck is going on. And pretty much, we know that something is not right. We know that this guy has a history of violence. <laughs> but we, we're not, like, but at this point, you're kind of thinking, is this guy actually a violent guy? Is he who he says he is, or does he have a dark past? Turns out he does have a dark past. And pretty much, um, you know, the son ends up pretty much then um the son ends up getting attacked at school the bullies uh, try to attack the son the son kicks the fucking shit out of the bully in a really satisfying scene uh gets suspended the dad has an argument with him and slaps him and you're like fuck is this whole incident making this guy fucked up uh the son has a gun like tries to use the gun at one point or tries to like look at it um but we find out that, yes, Viggo Mortensen's name really is Joey Cusack and he does have a history of violence and he set, he left the uh, mobster life to become a family man and become a better person or whatever. He left it behind them. Uh, they come to the house. They kidnap the son. Um, we get a really intense scene and then we see basically he admits it, kills Ed Harris and the other gangsters. Well, no, he doesn't kill Ed Harris. He kills the other guys. Uh, I believe he gets shot. Ed Harris has a gun to him and then this teenage son fucking shoots him. Um, and the, the wife becomes convinced that he is lying and he tells her at the hospital that, yeah, his name really is Joey Cusack. He left it behind. It causes the wife to get sick and then starts causing problems in the relationship. They argue. They hey fuck on the stairs. Like, did they not watch the fucking room? Why would you have sex on the fucking stairs? Ew. Do it in the bedroom. Then you see her titties and her bush. Boobs and bush. Boobs and bush. Sorry, I have to, I have to reference knocked up. But um, yeah, didn't think I'd fucking do that in a David Cronenberg video. And essentially then, um, William Hort's character rings up and asks to see um, Joey. 
he travels all the way to the place. We get the final confrontational scene, kills a few bad guys, kills um uh kills William Hort and movie ends with them all praying at home. Very depressing ending, similar to the fly. And uh pretty much there's also the scene where Sam confronts them and like I wanna hear the truth and stuff like that. That's pretty much the whole movie in a nutshell. I know I probably just re like pretty much just summarized the whole thing when it's not that hard of a plot. But what do I think of it? I fucking loved it. I thought that this film was fucking excellent. It was so gripping from start to finish. Like instantly, right? Like I wasn't sure where the movie was gonna go because it starts off, you know, at this place, this kind of like rundown place. The guys like we gotta go. We gotta take this out. We got these two gangsters. Talking. I was like, yeah, whatever. And we get this whole dialogue between these two villainous characters, and you're thinking, okay, these are gonna be the leads. But no. And I'm thinking, okay, this is kind of reminding me a little bit of Hell or High Water. Um, but no. So you know that something's bad. The guys, Jason Clark is filling up the thing. The guy goes in. There's a bunch of dead bodies or whatever. And then you just get this moment where Jason Clark goes in. He's like, yo, you got to go in and check that. And he starts pouring all this gasoline around. And this little girl's like, <gasps> he's like, shh, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Shh. <laughs> and then he just pulls a gun out and shoots. And then we cut to this amazing transition to the who the real characters are. And instantly, Viggo Mortensen, you know, they really do a good job at making you like him before you find out that he's not the guy he says he is. Um... Because instantly, you know, his daughter's there having a fucking nightmare. And she's like, oh my God, oh my God, I, I, I had a nightmare and stuff. And he's like, what's wrong, sweetie? And all that. He's like, I had a nightmare about monsters and stuff. I, I see monsters, shadow monsters and stuff. He's like, shadow monsters? They're not real. And then I really like, because the, the son comes in, the older brother. And he's like, what's the matter? And, all, and then he's like, oh, I had bad dreams about shadow monsters. He's like, shadow monsters, they don't come out at night. I remember dad used to be like that with me. And like instantly you're like damn likable character you know he's a caring older brother he's not a dick to his little sister it's different than the the wife comes in and you get to introduce to her and they're talking like oh is everything okay and instantly you're like well this is a nice family the, a regular family so it sets him up as a regular person then they're downstairs they're talking about different things oh did you get that thing for school he's like oh yeah and he's talking to his wife they're having breakfast all the usual kind of family shit and there's a lot of great moments with him as the family and a lot of great instances of foreshadowing like i like when he goes into the coffee shop he's like hey what's up how you doing and all that like nice to see you he's like yeah so i was with this girl and then you know we were together and she ended up stabbing me with a fork and he's like wow you dumped her though right no i married her uh, we've been married six years and then we divorced and all that and it's a very funny scene you get to know his relationship with everyone in there it's like oh yeah the girl's like oh yeah how, how you doing and all that um so i like the, the little set up and the, the build up to like you know showing these people regularly before shit hits the fan and before the movie gets fucking batshit crazy um and then you know, you have this amazing shot, by the way, of, like, the baseball. He's like, yeah, come on, let's go. And the guy is, like, playing baseball. And then, like, he fucking, the son, he catches it. He's like, yeah, come on, guys. And then you get the asshole bully comes up and goes, I think you're fucking tough shit, don't you? He's like, come on, man, it's just a game. And then he go, they go inside and he's looking over. And then he confronts him in the locker room. He's like, you think you're tough shit, man, you, you F-A-G-G-O-T. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're totally right. I don't want any trouble. And then I like how it forces kind of care on away. He's like, no, 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 I don't want any trouble. I don't want to fight. You know, it's cool. I am a, a F-A-G-G-O-T pussy dipshit. And he's like, you better stop it. He's like, so wait. And then he starts going, oh, I'm not being smart. He's like, wait, so am I a F-A-G-G-O-T or am I this? And he's like, shut up. And he hits him and all that. And it's like, yeah, okay, so this is a typical jock douchebag. And you're like, fuck, I want this kid to stand up for himself. Um, so it does a good job at like letting you know, like the characters. And obviously, I really like the relationship and the development of the relationship between uh, Tom Stalls and his wife. Because at first, his wife's like, yeah, that's great. And they're driving. 
And she's like, oh, do you want to go to a drive-in movie? He's like, no, I'm pretty sure they don't have them here anymore. So then they're kissing. It's like, yeah, I wanted to, to do this because I never got to be young. I never got to be, we never got to be teenagers together. So then there's that great moment with her role playing. And it's it's actually kind of sweet as well with the music. And she comes out in the cheerleader. He's like, oh my God. He's like, you're so beautiful. And all that. And then they're, they're making out and having sex. They're like, oh, my parents are in the next room. We got to be quiet. And then they're making out and having sex. And then they're naked and saying to each other like she's like oh you know i love you i was like i love you so much too and all this and you're like Ugh. and it's like oh let's just say i didn't need Pornhub for another while <laughs> no anyway so basically you know that's kind of like i like that scene a lot because it was hot but it was actually a nice scene showing their relationship and then later on in the movie there's that scene where they're like fuck you fuck you joey and they argue when they're fucking fighting he's like no stop get off me and he kind of slams her down and punches her and like oh shit is he showing aggression he's like i'm leaving and she's like no he's pulling her down and the stairs and stuff like that and they're like oh no what the fuck is he gonna do and then they start kissing making out and having sex on the stairs then he's in the room and then she comes out fully naked like she has a robe on but you see her boobies in her vagina and she walks out and you're like um, I'm just gonna rewind that scene. <sighs> you also see his ace, anyway. But I really like I like the, the development in the relationship. Once again, similar to the movie I reviewed, Death Sentence, just a very realistic mo moments in it. Like the part where he's brought into the hospital the second time, and she's like, "It's not." He's like, "Is it true?" He's like, "What?" He's like, is it, are you Tom? He's like, yes, that's my name, Tom Stalls. He's like, it's not, when would you believe? It's like, not what I heard. It's what I saw. He's like, okay, I used to be, my real name is Joey. I used to be involved with these people. She's like, no, oh, no, no, no. And then she runs over and fucking vomits. And it feels real. And like, so our whole relationship has been a fucking lie. He's like, no, I left it behind to start a family. And it's just like, holy shit. That is some heavy fucking shit. So he's kept this secret. And you're like, that kind of gives you a bit of a, he sort of becomes a bit of a Walter White kind of character then. And you're like, oh shit, I like this guy at the beginning. Now I don't know if I like him very much. You know, he's kind of like an anti-hero. Um, and I really like how Ed Harris is kind of set up to be the main, like, first of all, the two guys at the beginning are set up to be the main villains. So they're driving, you know, they got, and like, you know, the teenage son is hanging out with this, with, I don't know, I don't think it's his girlfriend, I think it's actually just his girl best friend, it's like, she's like, yeah, so, what do you want to do this weekend, why do we always sit around here and do nothing, it's like, yeah, I know, it's weird, so like, they're hanging out this kind of like, uh, in the town, and the guy's like, hey, is that that fucking freak over there, that kid, and then they're driving, it's like, yeah, then they're driving, then they turn around, it's like, let's kick his ass, should we kick his ass, like, yeah, and then they drive around, and the car nearly hits some and it's two thugs, then you get that really intense fucking scene. And just like The Fly, there's a lot of intense moments. There's a lot of moments where you're like, yeah, David Cronenberg definitely directed this. Because obviously, The Fly is a horror film. This is more of a drama um, film. Also kind of an action movie in parts as well. And then like, he's there like, oh yeah, you know, he's making coffee and just fucking around with his mates. Oh yeah, that's great. We got to lock up, guys. And then they're talking and all that. And then they walk in and they're like, black coffee black and he's like guys uh we're closing up he's like he's like you walk in like guys we're closing up he's like coffee black get me a goddamn coffee bitch and he says that to the the woman he's like give me a fucking coffee it's like okay okay and she walks off and stuff and you're like oh shit and then you know they're like okay and he has a gun he's like get a coffee he's like get over there and he's like okay i'm she's like i'm like he's like why don't you uh just leave, right? Uh, the girl's like, right, I'm going to leave now. It's like, get the fuck back there, bitch. Get over here. Nobody move. And then there's a couple there. It's, you two, shut the fuck up. You know, the two couple, the couples that are there, like, crying. And it's just, once again, a very intense fucking scene. And you're like, oh, shit. But then, movie kind of kicks off. And then, like, he's like, guys, we mean no trouble. Shut the fuck up, right? Then he grabs the coffee, skulls the guy, hits him. The guy's like, pew, pew, grabs him shoots fucking jason clark out the fucking window the other guy's there and he's like no shoots him on the ground and once again the practical effects of the gun and the blood are done so well 
I love how the movie sets him up as like a, a random guy that becomes a hero and you're thinking oh a local guy becomes a hero and he has to deal with fame no that's not what the movie is it's in the title he has a history of violence um and at first like oh my god local hero and then he's brought to the hospital he's like hey you okay he's like yeah and then he's watching tv he's like tom stalls was a local hero and then he's the the girls getting interviewed like he saved my life two, two guys said um I, they were gonna kill me you know they're gonna fucking kill me like he, he saved my life and all this that's just a really nice scene it's like oh tom you're okay and all that and you know his wife comes in that's just a nice scene it's like yeah i want to go home and then, of course you get the paparazzi scumbags like oh here he is tom 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 here he is what's it like to be a hero and stuff like that and it's like and she, he's answering questions and he's like look i really just want to spend time with my family he goes in his fa his son's like dad you're a hero and he's like ah please don't hurt me and all that you know yeah it's easy and it's fine it's like oh and like oh look more fucking paparazzis and he's looking out and then instantly you're like no that's definitely a fucking crime person um but like um what's it Viggo Mortensen plays the role of Tom so well he plays a badass really well he plays a fucking nice guy like a regular family man really well and Viggo Mortensen will be mostly known for Lord of the Rings and this would have been this was 2005 so this would have been two years after Return of the King so he'd already made his mark um William like Ed Harris is just amazing at playing villains he's great in the Truman Show he's great in State of Grace and he's great in this um every scene he's in like hi Joey what are you doing Joey I like a black coffee Joey he's like sir do you think do we know each other like he's like no yeah joey how do you not remember me how do you not remember what you've done to me and he has a fucked up eyes like this eye is not so bad and stuff like that and it's just this really great intense moment and you know that scene's and it's like okay if you don't leave my husband alone i'm gonna call the cops like yeah whatever we'll be on our way so they go off there's that scene where they're driving the cops. It's like Sam comes and pulls them over. He's like, now listen, there's good folks in this neighborhood. He's like, what seems to be the problem, officer? He's like, listen, there's good folks in this neighborhood. We don't want you harassing anybody. He's like, yes, officer, it won't happen again. And then Ed Harris, really, for most of the film, is the main villain. There's that scene where Tom is in the, the story. He's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And then, you know his wife is like you know ed harris is there like hi tom it's talking he drives and he's running after the car and the music builds up and the music in this film is fucking fantastic and he goes there's like guys are you okay you okay he's like what's wrong dad what's wrong he's like nothing what's wrong and then the wife is upstairs and she has a shotgun in the room which is um that scene right there um or well, that's later on is it i don't know um no she's holding the door and then there's another scene where she has a shotgun no, she's, no, okay. She has a shotgun, whatever. And he's like, no, I thought they were here and all that. It's like, I thought they were here. He's like, what, why, would, why would they be here? It's like, I thought they were here, Dad. It's like, no, why would they be here? And then the son picks up the gun. He's like, no, 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 give me that. Be careful with that thing, huh? It's like, yeah. And then there's a lot of great moments where, um, like, the, the, like the, the mother is literally just out at a shopping mall doing her shopping with the kid. She's paying for it. She was like, oh, these shoes will fit her nicely, yeah. And then she looks out and she sees Ed Harris sitting there. And essentially she's like, so like, I, I gotta go. And like the daughter's gone. The daughter just goes missing. She's like, where is she? Where is she? She's like, ma'am, ma'am, you can't walk out there without this paying for the shoes. Like, yeah, here, here they are. And you get this amazing fucking moment where she's playing on like the little thing there. You know, the, the thing that you, you're in a shopping mall. You know what I mean? The little fucking thing you put money in. And Ed Harris is like, yeah. And she's like, stay the fuck away from my family. And there's this great moment between them. It's like, yeah, your husband did this to me. And I was like, it's like, whoa. And that's no no way to be using language in front of your kid and stuff like that. And this great intense scene. And she says it to the husband. It's like, yeah. And then I love the scene where him and the son argue. Um, basically what happens is the son is in the locker room the bully comes up oh you think you're fucking great no no not the locker room he's in the he's in the canteen he's talking to his best friend and he's like yeah fucking you think you're fucking hot tough shit it's like no or whatever and he goes away and it's like just leave it and then the guy goes hey fuck you you fucking cock sucking piece of shit and beats the living shit out of the guy there's blood coming out and all of that great practical effects 
And then the son has the argument. It's like, listen, we never solve. You know, it's like, you got to, he's like, how could you do something like that? He's like, look, I only got suspended. He's like, it doesn't matter. We don't solve things in this family with violence. And he's like, yeah, but it's okay shooting them in the head. And then he fucking slaps them. So he, hypo- he is a bit of a hypocrite in that moment. But then you get this amazing sequence where uh, Ed Harris and the gangsters come, like, like they're, they're like, where is he? And they're, they're looking for the kid. And you're like, oh, fuck, did he run away or something because he got hit? Um, and then essentially what happens is they go outside and Ed Harris is there and you get this long, great moment where he's like, okay, when he's like, get out of the car. Like, no, don't hurt him and all that. And he's there and they're threatening and they're like, okay, we're going to kill you now. And it's this really, really fucking intense scene where they're talking. And then Viggo Mortensen, Tom Stahl, just turns around and goes, <laughs> fucks this guy's nose up and it gets gory. And you're like, that just reminded me of something out of the fly. The gore, practical effects that make these David Cronenberg movies great. So he fucks the guy up, grabs a gun, shoots, shoots these other fuckers. Then Ed Harris shoots Viggo Mortensen in the fucking leg or something. He's about to kill Viggo Mortensen, but then <laughs> fucking shotgun blast. Blood goes everywhere. The, the, the son has a shotgun and saves him, saves his dad. The mother's upstairs and the kid's panicking. It's like, oh, come on, come on, baby. You don't want to see this. It's like, oh, no, no. And then she looks out the window and sees what happens. And it's just an excellent fucking scene. Brilliantly set up. Really brilliantly done with the practical effects. That's when the movie takes a detour and there starts being problems in the marriage and they start arguing and the wife starts crying. And then there's the scene where Sam comes questioning them like there was a scene where they, earlier on where he's looking he's like okay I'll, I'll check in hopefully you are okay I can I can make sure that everything is fine and it's like oh yeah thank you Sam and then he there's the scene where the, him and Sam are talking like hey Sam how are you he's like I'm doing pretty good how are you he's like oh yeah fine we're just making sure everything is okay you know that and he starts kind of asking the questions and he comes back and saying yeah I've been looking through things and uh looking at files on Joey Cusack and not, nothing, all of it's not really linking up or making any sense so I think it's time for the truth and he, he and then eventually even in the desperate moments his wife still defends him and says Sam hasn't his family been true enough it's awful, then she starts crying then they say goodbye, then they argue and then all of that then you get that amazing moment where he's lying down and you get William Hoare calling like hey Joey do you want to come? Do you want to come and see me? And stuff like that. Or do I have to come and see you? He's like, yeah, okay, cool. So he gets in the car. You get this long scene where he's driving away. He's supposed to meet this guy at a bar. The bar is like, you, this guy is like, he comes up to him. He's like, you, you, uh, thingy, or whatever his name is. He's like, yeah, you, Joey. He's like, yeah. So then they're in the car talking, driving. They go up to this house. They go away. He's like, hey, Joey, it's nice to see you again. It's like, hey. So William Hort is actually Joey's brother. And then there's, they're talking, whatever. It's like, and he's like, beforehand, it's like, I gotta check you. It's like, oh no, 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 I don't have a gun. It's like, no, I gotta check you. So he checks him out. Then you get this scene, great dialogue scene between the two. It's like, I've always hated you, you know. He's like, you know, you've always hated me. You've always tried to strangle me. When when mom brought me home from the hospital, you're like, shit, this guy's fucked. And then um, he's like, oh yeah, Joey, it's fine and all that. Like, I wouldn't do that to you or whatever. And then you get this kind of argument scene we're not going to do anything and then the guy literally comes behind him and starts choking him and he fucks him up and he's like jumping behind him fucks him up and he starts <laughs> get a great fucking shoot out scene or <laughs> fucking people up left and right blood everywhere get a great scene between him and William Hort fighting whatever outside eventually he shoots William Hort in the back of the head goes home to his family they start praying the daughter's made something and then it just ends and it's really sad but the final act the final scene with William Hort and all is fucking excellent um, same with like the whole family scene it was beautifully done like holy shit like this film was excellent like the special effects the drama the fucking acting from everybody Viggo Morrison William Hort you know everyone gave a real really realistic performance and you know they all had great chemistry with each other and it got it kept you on the edge of your seat and you wanted to see more and it was more it got more and more suspenseful as the film went on and it was gripping 
um, and he wanted to know what was happening and I wasn't sure where it was going and it got more interesting and the editing was great, the music was great, the camera shots, the way that he directs it, even the opening with the whole car driving at the, the motel, the atmosphere of like being sunny and all, um, it's practical effects. What else am I missing anything? I like the scene where he drives all the way to the, whatever, he wants to meet up William Hort. The final act of William Hort was great. He's like the big bad villain, the puppet master behind all of it. Um, I really liked that. But um, yeah, I thought the writing was great, the music, the acting, visually nice to look at. Just a great movie. It deserves the Athean rating. It has nice gore. And yeah, it's a brilliant movie. Um, and overall, I'd probably give it a 10 out of 10. I couldn't find anything wrong with it. I loved it. It is a classic. And yeah, so History of Violence, I loved it. Front, spine, back. And as I said, I've already probably showed this in my, well, I haven't really because I haven't shown the inside. Um, but there's just the other films. But um, yeah, so this print and Blu-ray is great. So yeah, love this movie. I will see you guys later. Bye.